NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of foundations. Today it is 31st lecture of this course and today we are going to talk about dynamic soil resistant structure. So this is the, uh, we are going to start the new module today. So first of all, the lecture title is Introduction to Soil Resistant Introduction. Continuing with that, so what you have here, uh, let me share the slide. So we have the six modules of this course. One module that is miscellaneous is added uh, now. We already covered introduction. Then we also discuss in detail cell foundations. Pile foundations was a major uh, topic which we have already covered, then well foundations. And today we are going to start the fifth module of the course that is SSI for D foundations. SSI stands for soil resistant traction. And finally, we'll discuss miscellaneous once this is over. So when we talk about SSI for D foundations, uh, these are the uh, this, uh, different chapters. That is, uh, it will be divided in the, this module will be divided into five chapters. First chapter of this module is an introduction to soil resistant traction, which we are going to discuss today. Then second will be, what are the major effects of SSI and methods of analysis? Then we are going to talk about strong ground motion and wave propagation, which is very important for any SSI analysis to understand. Then we are also going to talk about ground response analysis. And finally, we are going to discuss what is called soil pile introduction. So today we are going to talk about the introduction to SSI. When we talk about introduction to SSI, Today's lecture will be covered under the following head. First of all, let's discuss what are the damage due to SSI in past earthquakes. Then we are going to talk about basic objective of SSI. Then we are going to discuss importance of SSI and what are the different steps for soil interaction, which is free field motion, kinematic interaction, and inertial interaction. Okay. So these are the coverage here. But before we talk about that, one thing is important that what is SSI itself? The term soil is introduction. It looks, uh, you know, that very complicated. But basically what happens when the, uh, your structures are like, for example, buildings, they are situated on the soft soil or on the loose soil then during the earthquake or during the shaking, the response of the structure is very much changed due to the response of the soil. So basically, as in SSI, the, uh, the response of the soil will also change the response of the structure. At the same time, how the structure is responding to for a given load that will also influence the response of the soil. So with that, we continue with that. So let's discuss what are the damages in the past earthquakes. Some of the slides here has been already discussed from some other observation. For example, this is the first slide, which is from 1964 Niigata, Japan earthquakes. And what you could see in this slide, it shows the liquefaction induced bearing capacity failure to piles. So what can be observed here that you have a number of buildings okay? and these are the tall buildings and most of the buildings are standing but few are got damaged. So for example, these two buildings get tilted while this building is almost uprooted from the foundation. It appears that its superstructure is all right but there is a what is called foundation failure here and that foundation failure is here. Right? So when you have this here at this point so for this building, and why this foundation of this building get failed? Because due to the liquefaction below, uh, that uh, bearing capacity of the soil get reduced and it is not able to support the foundation and it gets failed. Here, when we talk about liquefaction, this is also the effect of soil amplification, which is the first step of SSI 
and that we will discuss in detail, very much detail when we discuss later. Continuing with this, this was one of the example. Other two examples where there was a damage of bridges in past earthquakes. Again, it is soil amplification as well as liquefied from soil. These, of course, these slides we also discuss when we discuss uh, the file foundation passing through the liquefiable soil. So this photograph, first one is from Kobe earthquake, 1995 Kobe earthquake, while the second one is 1964 Niigata earthquake. The first is for Nisiomia bridge, which got damaged, where softening of pile foundation occur uh, during Kobe earthquakes, and the, the downward is the show of bridge where with its one span get flattened due to the ground. What you could see here, the deck of the bridge fall down. And this is basically due to foundation failure. Same thing happens in case of the Shoa bridge. You could see once the simply supported spawn collapsed, then the, uh, the deck of the bridge get fall down. Here, one thing you need to understand: in all these cases, there are issues related to liquefaction, but at the same time, there are issues related to uh, soil amplification also. Continue with that. This is a classical example of uh, soil amplification, or what we would say that uh, the effect of SSI on uh, Hansen Expressway bridge due to in Kobe earthquake. What you could see, you could see clearly the deck of the bridge is here, passing it, it appears to be intact. And here there are damages to piers. And and that's this uh, piers that fall down as a result that is also fall down. So in this breeze, there is a failure to the piers and it is again related to the soil amplification. Continue with that, then you have uh, some another example here, which is Higashi Nada via after collapse again from 1995 Kobe earthquake. So what you could see in this case that you could see the reinforcement is visible clearly and uh, that means this cover is totally exposed and this is also a failure due to the soil amplification, ground amplification which we are going to discuss in one of the lectures during this module. What you could see that once this uh, the piers fell down naturally that uh, the bridge is going to be collapsed. So it happened in 1994 Kobe earthquake. Now there is another example which is also from Kobe earthquake and this I think we have discussed when we talk about liquefaction. So this is a typical example where it is said that when the, your structure are situated on the pile foundations or deep foundations they get survived. So the tank was situated on the pile foundations. Piles were passing through the liquefiable soils. Soil got liquefied. As a result, uh, due to soil liquefaction and ground amplification, there is some damage to piles, which could be visible here. It could be seen easily here. So if we here, this is uh, you could see some damage to piles. But at the same time, you have this tank or the superstructure remain intact. So there are small damage to, uh, like, you know, that's uh, uh, only small cracking uh, plaster and other things for piles, but they are safe, they are working. But there was no damage to the superstructure. So that means this pile foundation, due to this pile foundation, this structure survived. Continue with that, this is another example of soil amplification. But this example is from 2001, January 2001, Bhuj earthquake of India, of our country. You could see that clearly there is a peculiar damage to pier cap of the bridge. And this is again this amplification effect. Once this is like you know that uh, this uh, wave got amplified and this this uh, pier cap got damaged. Now, what happens when this due to this soil amplification or liquefaction, 
a typical example is what happens to the files when they are passing through the uh, the liquefiable and non liquefiable zones. So these kind of things we discuss when we discuss the files in liquefiable zones. And again, we are discussing here. As mentioned earlier, let's say that this is you have the piles on the top of it, you have pile cap, and on the top of it, you have the peer. This uh, load is applied in the horizontal direction, in vertical direction, as well as uh, rotational. That is what we call the moment on the pile cap. And once these, once these loads are applied on here, then what we, we may have here that because there is a junction between non liquefiable zones and liquefiable zones. As a result, more stresses will come at these junctions. So you could see that file got buckled here. Okay? And there is a deflection. If I say this was the center line of the pile initially, but now the center line of the pile is moved to here, the, the dotted line. So, so much deflection occurs due to this liquefaction and which could be possible due to this uh, uh, ground amplification or soil amplification. So these are the some of the examples and where this damages are there. Now let's talk about what is the basic objective of SSI of soil stress interaction and why, how it works and what is the meaning of SSI. So we will discuss, uh, you know, that its importance but before that, what is the situation when you have static loading and when you have the dynamic loading or seismic loading? You could see in this figure, a structure is situated on the soil layer and it is what is called layered system. You have a number of soil layers and these soil layers are on what is called half space. Okay. When we say structure here, this structure include uh, foundation also. So this include the foundation also. So this is including foundation. Foundation because for foundation you know all the things, you know the dimension, you know the material. So here the foundation is assumed this is a part of the structure itself. There is no separate. Okay. So this is plus foundation. Now what you have? This structure, including its foundation, is subjected to what is called, uh, like you know, that uh, if suppose you have subjected to static load only, and then structure is situated on soil, not on the rock, then what we can do? We can consider some part of the soil with the structure and analyze. So here the problem is due to the unbounded domain, because compared to the structure, one of the major issue in the soil is that Mother Earth is an unbounded domain. It is not a fixed domain. So we need to consider the unbounded domain and how we can consider this unbounded domain while analyzing for static loading as well as dynamic loading. For static loading, what one can do? One can consider some part of the soil with structure and apply what is called a fixious boundary. Fixious boundary is such a boundary which is not really there, but you are considering some part of the soil with judgment, with the structure, and then you can analyze the soil, with the structure, and this analysis is all right. There is no problem for static loading. But when you deal with the what is called the seismic loading or earthquake loading, this kind of analysis is not permitted. And what is the reason for it? Because when this structure is subjected to seismic loads, then the waves will vibrate. Okay. And structure will radiate some vibration will come from the structure. This is let's say seismic loading, which is applied at the base of the structure, or let's say directly on the top of the structure which may be external dynamic loading, which could be due to machinery loading or some other reason, for example, wind loading, whatever may be the reason. So in general, when this structure is subjected to what is called the, uh, this when the structure is subjected to uh, vibrations, 
then how we can deal with that? So let me raise this one. Okay. So when this is structure is subjected to uh, seismic excitation, then waves will travel from the structure and they will hit this fixed boundary. If this boundary would not be there, then in that case, this waves will continue to travel to infinity and it will not come back to the structure. But once you place this boundary at some depth below the structure, then this boundary will reflect some waves, some part of the wave, this wave back to the structure, though uh, some part is maybe already, maybe still continue to go. So that means and if this boundary would not be have, would not be there, then this would have been gone after this boundary, after this, and this would have continued to infinity. This would not reflected back to the structure. So due to the presence of this boundary, this reflection which is shown in dotted line is occurs and that is not permitted. So this is a reflection R. Okay. And this reflection is not permitted. Why this is not permitted? Because you are putting this artificial boundary or fixed boundary. In fact, there is no boundary. This boundary has been put here to simplify the problem. And this kind of simplification is all right for static loading. But when you deal with the seismic loading or dynamic loading, then this is not permitted. Okay. Then what one need to do? one need to design this boundary, fixes boundary in such a way that this boundary act like an energy sink. Energy sink, let me write here, this boundary act like an energy sink. Energy sink. Energy, difficult to write with this, so energy sink. That means, all the incoming waves which hit this boundary should be absorbed by this boundary and no wave should be reflected back to the structure. And if you say that all incoming waves are absorbed with this boundary, no reflection, that satisfy that condition. So that condition is called radiation condition. So the boundary should be modeled in such a way that it is able to model the unbounded domain and that should be done using what is called the satisfying the radiation condition. So this, so that means radiation condition need to be satisfied in any case. And this is the basic objective of any SSI analysis. So again, I summarize it here. For soil resistant traction, it is important to model the unbounded soil domain. And this unbounded soil domain should be modeled in such a way, if you apply a fixed boundary, then this boundary sh should act like an energy sink, where all incoming waves get trapped inside this boundary. But uh, all the outgoing waves are stopped. So this, this, will, uh, this boundary will be acting like an absorber. Okay. So once this is done, that means you are able to simulate this boundary perfectly. And there are different choices to model this boundary, which we'll discuss later. Here, one thing is there. If you have a rigorous boundary, which comes after so much uh, uh, computation, that boundary may be very sophisticated and advanced boundary, which can be used to define this fixed boundary but that the calculation will be rigorous and we, which we are not going to discuss rather we will discuss some simplified way to how to deal or how to model this boundary that continue with that now let's discuss what is the importance of ssi so when we talk about importance of ssi you have two different sides okay. and what you could see uh, in this figure, you could see that there are two identical structures. The structures are exactly same, 
the in the first case the structure when we say structure that means including its foundation in the first case structure is situated on hard rock while in the second case this structure is situated on the soil and which is a flexible soil so what do you have let's compare the seismic response of structures which are founded on rocky site and on soft soil site so here you have rock site and here you have soft soil site when the structure is situated on the rock then let's see what happens but here before we proceed further you need to understand that both the structures are identical that means their material and geometrical property are same number one they are subjected to same input motion or seismic excitation applied to the both the structure is same here when we talk about seismic excitation you could see that there is a vertical propagating wave as the bigger arrow shows you this uh, bigger arrow shows you the direction of wave propagation and this smaller arrow is direction of particle motion and direction of particle motion is perpendicular to direction of wave propagation so one can easily see that what is the input wave so the in this case of input wave the direction of particle motion will give you uh, this is the direction of particle motion and size of this arrow for particle motion is telling the amplitude of uh, this particle motion or displacement so this much is the amplitude if you increase the size of this arrow that means displacement is large if you decrease then it is smaller so this uh, the size is also some meaning now when this uh, both sides both uh, buildings uh, buildings are same in both the cases but uh, one is situated on the rock another in on the soil so in both the cases now let's say that what happens when they are subjected to the loading mentioned here okay so first thing let's discuss the case when your structure is situated on the rock it is a here for the structure which are founded on rock the horizontal motion can be applied directly to the base of the structure that means you can apply directly to the base of the structure the input acceleration resulting in the applied horizontal inertial load will, will be constant over the height of the structure so first of all when the, your structure is situated on the rock then this input motion coming from seismographs or let's say the, for uh, some instrumentation then it can be directly applied to the base of the structure okay and uh, once you do this whatever acceleration applied horizontal acceleration will be constant over the height of the structure so you could see in this case even at the height of the structure you have these two arrows and the size of both arrows is more or less same and that means uh, this acceleration which this was the input motion and output coming on the structure uh, what you have in this case is constant okay so here continue this so the horizontal motion can be applied directly to the base of the structure the input acceleration resulting in the applied horizontal initial load will be constant over the height of the structure during the earthquake an overturning moment and the transfer shear acting at base will develop and as the rock is very steep these two stress resultant will not lead to any additional deformation at the base so when it is subjected to shaking then you may have some motion at the ground uh, one overturning moment and a transfer shear component but this will not cause to any stress because here it is assumed that your uh, the structure is situated on the hard rock on reef the resulting horizontal displacement of the base is thus equal to the control motion no rocking machine arises at the base so whatever at the base you apply which is same as your input control motion and rocking component is neglected here for a given control motion the seismic response of the structure depends only on the properties of the structure so this is very important for the case one when your structure is situated on the rock 
then the response of the structure depends only on the material property of the structure not on the property of the rock so when it is on the hard strata or on the bad rock then things are easy but always this is may not be the case that your structure is always situated on the rock there could be situation when your structure including the foundation is situated on the soil column below soil column you have a bad rock which was the case here now in this case what happens when the structure is situated on the soft soil here the motion of the base of the structure in point o will be different from the control motion in the control point a because of the coupling of the structure soil system so what is uh, a at point a at point a control motion is applied here so what you have you have one control uh, motion which is uh, shown in this figure and you have a control point which is at point a so the control motion is applied in control point a which was the case in case of a rocky site but now the same motion is applied at point o so when you apply at the point o then this motion applied to the point o will be different than what was applied to point a and this was due to the presence of the soil column which try to amplify the particle motions or displacement when it is so that we are going to discuss in detail so what is done here because of the coupling of the structure soil system the soil affects the dynamic response of the structure in three ways how it is affected it modifies the free field motion and the free field motion is the motion at the site in the in the absence of the structure and of any excavation if there were no soil on top of the rock in point c of figure 2c if you see here let's see you have the case here so what is the situation in this case here uh, the seismic response of structure on found on soft soil is discussed and there are different figures here figure b is outcropping rock that means on the top of the it you don't have any soil column in that case whatever the motion applied at point c will be control motion and this is point c can be treated as a controlling point so in this case the controlling point control motion is applied at a controlling point and its amplitude is shown in this figure which is the size of the arrow what happens if you put on this uh, uh, bedrock on the top of it if you put or place soil column then due to the presence of the soil column not only other points but at point c itself that response is changed and most of the time it they get decreased okay then if you go uh, like uh, the dotted lines are showing you the location of the foundation where the latter when the structure is considered constructed then foundation is placed at point d and e let's consider two point d and e so at point d and e the motion is get amplified due to the presence of the soft soil column and as we mentioned earlier the size of these arrows are telling you the size of amplification so this here so this size of this arrow is simply telling you the amplitude so you could see that at point c that motion that decreased but point d and e uh, it get amplified much okay and this amplification can be observed by comparing the size of the arrow here and another arrow here which is even bigger than this that means uh, that uh, this this due to the presence of soil column it get amplified what the motion get amplified and so this is here all right this was the case when you put only soil column but what happens in the next step in the next step you put your foundation at the location of the uh, point d and e for which you determine the response for earlier so what you have 
or uh, once you insert the foundation base of the foundation including structure which is shown here using dotted line not the solid line because here only inertial only the kind of, uh, you know that what is called the uh, the elastic properties of the soil is considered but no mass is considered and this kind of is called kinematic interaction or so this will be that means a uh, kinematic interaction for kinematic interaction one of the condition is here that the value let me write out down here so for this uh, inertia need to be zero so you have mass equal to zero so that means in this step the structure is analyzed this ssi system is analyzed using that uh, there is no mass no inertia no inertial forces so it is free field motion in the c and d it is kinematic interaction now if you put real uh, structure with some stiffness properties then whatever the response of this comes that is called inertial interaction and what is the difference between these three categories one is like bedrock here rock outcropping motion then you have free field response which is different at point d and e with your input motion then the same input motion d and e is applied to the base of this uh, this so at the junction here so then what is seen that you are applying only one component but which is translating component but in the result you not only get the translation but there is a rocking component also okay and finally when this uh, uh, this due to the presence of this rotation and translation uh, you have at the base of the structure you have displacement as well as rotation so this is the effect of inertial interaction continue with that so what we were discussing for the structure founded on soft soil i think most of the things i have already explained to you excavating and inserting the ridge base say foundation to the site will modify the rocking component and this body ridge body motion will result in acceleration what is this is leading to inertial load which will vary over the height of the structure in contrast to the applied acceleration in the case of a structure founded on rock this kind of interaction between soil and base in the absence of the superstructure is called kinematic interaction so kinematic interaction is that interaction which is uh, assuming which can be done assuming that mass of the structure is zero or negligible so the uh, when you don't consider the mass of the structure then inertial forces will not come in picture now continue with that in the presence of structure the inertial loads will apply to the structure will lead to an overturning moment and a transfer shear acting at point o this will cause deformation in the soil and then once again modify the motion at the base this part of analysis referred as inertial interaction so what is done here you have in case of kinematic interaction you have your input was only reciprocating component but you got rocking also in case of kinematic interaction and again this uh, the amplitude is inputted at the point o and this is the rocking components so that is also coming here so now due to uh, even your input motion was only reciprocating motion but here finally due to the presence of inertial interaction then you have this apply to the base of the structure at at point o and at point o not only you have the translation then again you have some rocking components so this is the change here continue with this now what you have here uh, this we have already discussed in detail very much then let's summarize the seismic effects of presence of soft soil which is the, uh, caused the ssi what is you call the control motion in the control point so which could be the point a on the surface or it could be on the top of some half a space so this control motion when it is subjected to effect of soil then what is called you got modified free field motion so modified free field motion is obtained then once you insert the base inside that so for example effect of base for example without foundation in that case effect of base 
will increase and it is the what is it will lead to what is called kinematic interaction so in this case kinematic interaction you neglect the mass of the structure as well as foundation which is incited to the storage is neglected so that means we can avoid the inertial forces but once it is done during kinematic interaction so your reserves of kinematic interaction are fed to the next part that is effect of structure and in this case when kinematic interaction is subjected uh, is applied to the effect of a structure then it lead to what is called inertial interaction and this completes so you have this control motion and on the top of control motion you have what is called modified free fall motion then effect of base will lead to the kinematic interaction and finally when you insert the structure and it will lead to inertial interaction okay so this was all about it and this is the reference from which uh, most of most of things are been borrowed a book by wolf jp uh, and the title is dynamic soil interaction published by prentice hall incorporation as as a wood clip new jersey usa this is the uh, fundamental book and this is uh, appear to be almost 35 years now but still it is popular in the sense because fundamental concepts are given in this book so i request that please download this copy of this book and start reading that thank you very much